the icons of real estate podcast. Are you ready to learn the proven money-making secrets from top producing icon agents? Ready to skyrocket your business? This podcast is for you. Tune in every week with your host, Tomasz Fonseca, and find out how to implement proven strategies to 10 times your business. From $3 million to $30 million in just 12 months. Brought to you by the Masters in Real Estate Marketing, Arter SEO. Welcome to the Icons of Real Estate. I'm Tim Calloway. We have a very special guest for you today from Los Angeles, California. As you can see from the beautiful scene behind her, Jenny Ogla. How are you, Jenny? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm doing great. It's nice to see you. And it looks like you have some fantastic weather. Incredible. Probably high 70s, low 80s today. And it's not even clear, but it's so gorgeous. It is. Uh, it looks very nice. And I'm, I'm, well, I can't say as I'm totally jealous, as most people know, I'm in West Palm Beach and a lot of people like coming down here as well, but it's been a rough week. Um, so let's go ahead and start at the beginning. Uh, you're currently with Compass, correct? Correct. I've been with Compass and this particular office that I'm in for 12 years. So my office has gone through two acquisitions. We started out as John Arrow Group mm -hmm. and then we were acquired by Pacific Union International, which was a California based company. And then we're acquired approximately two years ago by Compass. Okay, fantastic. So what made you, uh, was it right out of college you decided to become a realtor or was there a is there uh, an, another path you kind of went and then veered into real estate? I actually had a very interesting path that got me into real estate. When I was in high school, I watched my father sell a home in Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. It took about six months or so to sell the property. And I remember him being extremely frustrated at that time. Um, the market was not as hot as it is now. Mm -hmm. And of course, I was paying very close attention, being at home for most hours as a teenager, and um, decided that I was going to get my real estate license so that the next time that he would buy or sell a property, it wouldn't be such a difficult experience for him. I really hated seeing my dad have trouble offloading a property that he owned. Right. So I, when I turned 18... I got my real estate license. Prior to that, I began studying while I was still in high school. Wow. So I began taking the class, preliminary classes leading up to it. It's always been an interest of mine, but I never thought I would pursue it as a full-time career. I actually went to, I got my real estate license when I turned 18. I went on to study for four years at a university and I was on a path to go to law school oh, wow. and I had a friend that was an attorney and the summer before I was supposed to start law school, he asked me to come in and work with him. He also happened to have his broker's license. So we actually started calling expired listings and geo farming and we were calling mobile homes all over Southern California which is something that I really didn't have a lot of knowledge about, right. but they were gorgeous and they were very interesting. And we met very interesting people along the way. So sure. I believe within a couple of months, we listed somewhere between 10 to 15 mobile homes and we were driving every weekend. I was fresh to the business. He had a little bit of more experience than I had. And uh, over each weekend, we were driving to places like Walnut, California, Lancaster, Palmdale. It was a great time meeting everyone, hearing all their stories. And then from there, um, I gradually started thinking, okay, well, I can sell more real houses too. Mm -hmm. So start joined a different company that was a little bit more established they were primarily focused on leasing at that time it was a boutique company and wanted to transition into sales and i i was young i was hungry i had great uh friends in the business i had seen people become very successful through real estate and i was still very interested in it so i joined the boutique company and we began cold calling together, door knocking together. And this was in 2011, I believe. And 
I ended up getting a good amount of listings my first year in the business. Um, people were still kind of recovering from the recession that, that was in 2008. And there weren't too many agents in the business, I think, at that time, because a lot of people had left the industry. Right. So through the first year or two that I was at that company, I established a lot of great relationships. I was doing open houses. Again, I was cold calling nonstop. And long story short, I ended up getting better and better at my job and decided to meet with a larger company, which was John Arrow Group at that time. And that's that's what got me into this office today. Wow. That's a great story. I have to ask a question. And um, and it's only because of, uh, you know, being reciprocal, being on opposite coast, right? Um, we have quite a few mobile homes in the state of Florida as well. And I'm curious, uh, what what's the average value of a, of a mobile home in uh, the Los Angeles area? So there's not many mobile homes in the areas that I work in right now, but there are are a good number in Malibu that overlook the ocean. Right. And those usually sell somewhere around the 800,000 range 000. for two to three bedroom. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious because when I when I came down to West Palm area, they they claim it's one of one of the most expensive mobile homes and it's right on, you know, right on the beach. And and I came to find find out soon enough that I was like, wow, million dollar mobile homes. Okay. I had that's never right. seen that before. Yeah. So that's kind of fascinating. For a while, I was branding myself as the agent that went from mobile homes to mansions. Nice. Hey, I think that's pretty good. That should Thank be your uh, your new podcast. You start a new Thank podcast you. of your own, Mobile Homes to Mansions. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So that's how you started and you, you kind of got moving up in, in the business. So tell me about today. I mean, what's your focus today? And uh, you know, how, how do you go about your day to day? Are you on a team? Are you solo or? So my day to day actually varies a lot, which I know is kind of taboo in this industry because a lot of coaches really want you to have um, a schedule that schedule you stick to on a daily basis. I am a team leader. I have 10 people on my team right now. I established the team about two years ago and my day to day varies. So most mornings I'll start in the office checking emails, negotiating contracts. And then throughout the day, I'll do a few showings if I have any scheduled. And by the end of the day is more of like a networking hour where I'll get together with clients um, or make some site visits if I hadn't done that for the day. Gotcha. You know, I was thinking as you said that I was like, she answers emails and negotiates contracts, and then she gets up and starts doing a bunch of other stuff. And I'm like, oh, that sounds like a whole day to me. <laughs> answering emails and negotiating contracts, I take my whole day. <laughs> it goes by very fast. And yeah. some evenings we're working very late, especially if we're on a deadline. For example, last night I was in a multiple offer situation with an 8 p.m. deadline. And right. I didn't hear back until 9 30. Because as much as you hope people will respect the timelines, it doesn't always work that way. Right. So there are days where we're starting super early or we're ending very late. And we're doing this all for our clients and keeping them happy and making sure that they get the properties that they want. There were instances in the beginning of my career where I lost certain properties for my clients because counters were coming in at 10, 30, 11 p.m. Yeah. at night and people were accepting offers the same evening. So it didn't even give agents a chance to consult with their clients the next business day. Yeah. So with that, I'm going to dovetail off what you're talking about right now. So tell me a little bit about, you know, it's been a, it's been an odd two, two and a half years. I think yeah. that's putting it nicely, you know, and, you know, we, and not only socially and not only in our homes, in our life, but obviously in real estate, right. Um, and now we we're, we're kind of going the other way a little bit. So tell me how it's, different now, uh, especially with offers. I mean, you know, I know I've heard the story, seen it firsthand, you know, I, 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 you know, contract today, sold tomorrow. What, what's happening now, at least in your area, in your world, uh, has it cooled off a little bit? Is it stabilizing? Is it normal? I mean, what, or what is normal anymore, but you know, how is it for you? 
I think we're entering right now in the Los Angeles market, a new normal that's a bit different than what we've experienced the last two years. Um, we are seeing a bit of a market cool down, but as agents, we're very fortunate because deals continue to be made. It right. seems like there is no lack of desirability to live in Los Angeles. And from what I'm seeing, when properties are priced right, they are still selling in multiple offers. As I mentioned last night, I was up negotiating on an 8 p.m. deadline in multiple offers. And wow. the home ultimately went, it sounds like, about 200000 over the 4150 asking price. Wow. So, yeah. However, had this property been listed five to six months ago, there might have been 14 offers. It's my understanding there were three offers on it. Okay. So still, still a good market, good hot market, just not as, uh, you know, crazy. I, I call it fervor. You know, there's just a lot of fervor when you can, you can put a listing out there and get 14 offers and it's like, oh, 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 oh you know, whatever, whatever. But yeah, you know, the nice thing is, Jenny, I, th I think uh, what you do and when you do it, when there's fewer offers and you still get 200,000 over, you know, that just means you're working, you know, you're working for the client, you're doing the right thing, right? I mean, it's just, it's just not handed to you on a platter. You're just doing That's exactly the right. right. I'm actually enjoying this pace a bit more than I did the last couple of years, because one, we're not getting overwhelmed with 14 to 15 offers, plugging them into a spreadsheet, overly aggressive buyers that are very angry if they're not getting a response within 24 hours. Oh, um, wow. Clients actually have time to digest and do due diligence on each buyer. And the agents have to step it up and do a little more work than maybe they've been used to over the last couple of years. There were many agents that were just throwing properties on the MLS or um, sellers that were hiring flat fee brokerages to list their properties because the properties right. were going to sell no matter what. It's now time for the agent community to step up again what they were used to doing, hire a professional photographer, get the marketing prepared correctly, show up to the showings. The days of lock boxes are over in, my, in what I see in the Los Angeles market. Right. I mean, I, I think in yeah, in Los Angeles, of course, because it's still such a hot market, but everywhere. I mean, uh I, I was speaking with uh someone up in Marin County, you know, far, far north of you, but a nice area. And very beautiful. Yeah, and then and then another one in um Palm Springs. So I mean, all of these areas are still like, nope, it's good, it's good. And they are all uh a lot of them are showing homes to people in other areas because a lot of them, you know, buy and don't live there and literally showing it on a laptop, you know, and walking through. And I'm, and I'm kind of laughing. I, mean, I see it all the time. It's not like it's new, but it is funny because when I was young and I'm old, so, you know, we're going way back, but you know, I'm, I'm talking like watching the Jetsons and things about how everything was going to be done. And I'm like, mm, we're kind of getting there when humans aren't coming into the home and getting a tour of the home and then signing, you know, That's right. making, making an offer. So we better get used to it, right? I mean, we literally better get used to it and acclimate. Do you agree? I mean, maybe even take it a step further in the way we do things. So, you know, it, this, it's a two, uh, what do they say? Two-sided sword, double-edged sword, double -edged sword for me. Yeah. Um, during COVID, I thought it was fantastic that we were able to tour people virtually. Mm -hmm. That is something, and when somebody makes an offer without physically seeing the property in person is what we refer to in the business as a blind offer. Right. You'll see that many times there will, in the listings, agents will put in the remarks, no blind offers. Wow. Because what has happened is when the client actually ends up touring the property or coming in for their inspections, they are a bit less excited about what they're seeing because Things where things can look a bit sure. nicer online. You know, there are filters, there is airbrushing. Yeah, I can make it look nice all day long online. That's right. So the, yeah. the 3D tours I thought were fantastic because you were able to do sort of a walkthrough through the entire home. And that was something that 
I think we are still incorporating in our business and that we were incorporating prior to COVID as well. But at the same time, um, I think that it's great that people are actually coming back out and seeing properties in person and getting serious about them, understanding not only the home's features, but also the area that it, properties are situated in. Yeah, true, true. That, that That's actually really good, a good point of view on that. Um, so our, our brokerage actually uses um, certain disclosures that are that say that if a buyer is seeing buying a property sight unseen or a blind offer that we can't be held responsible if the final right. product is not what they expected when they were doing the virtual walkthrough. Yeah, that's smart. Very smart. Okay, so Jenny, we talked about how you got started. And then we kind of talked about what's been going on here recently with you and, and, and Compass and uh, how how people are buying houses. So let's talk about the future. You know, let's get our crystal ball out and see what's, you know, you know see what's going on. Uh, it is getting into that time of year, <laughs> but <laughs> so. I love but, Halloween. That's my favorite holiday. It's a so great time. When I start I, seeing the pumpkins. We don't have real seasons in LA, but when you start seeing the pumpkins and smelling the pine cones and all this, you got the apples out. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it is gorgeous. And uh, yeah, I enjoy it as well. So tell me, uh, what what is the next, and I, you know, a lot of people say, well, tell me what the next five years is. And some people do have that five-year business plan or that blueprint, uh, but let's keep it a little tighter than that. What's, what does 2023 look like for you? Or what's the plan? 2023 for me, as of right now, looks pretty strong. I am seeing, especially some developers that I work with, getting a little bit nervous about the rising interest rates. Mm -hmm. We're very blessed to be living in an area where there is a lot of cash and liquidity. There's a lot of people with incredible equity in their properties. Right. And so while some people are expecting a dramatic shift, I personally do not see the LA market taking a huge hit. If anything, perhaps maybe a 5 to 10% correction on pricing, which right. should have likely happened anyway, because things were getting a bit out of control. Right. And, you know, we still have a lot of relationship pricing with our lenders. So we have clients this week that got a loan that were locked in at 3.6%, although the average rates are above 6% at the moment. Right. Wow, that's really good. I, I know a lot of people that would like that right now. So if anybody was looking to move into the area or, or get a listing, or maybe even just give you a call and, and you know, want they want to talk to Jenny and talk about, you know, being a realtor there, uh, how would they get in touch with you? You can easily get in touch with me via any of my social media pages. They're at Jenny O Homes. I run them myself. So you'll be DMing directly with me. Or you can send me an email at Jenny, J-E-N-N-Y, at JennyOHomes.com. Fantastic. So Jenny is part of the show where, you know, I kind of flip it over to you and give you the last word. And you can you can talk about anything you like here at the end, whether it's Homes, L.A., or maybe, uh, you know, one of the organizations you care about. Sure. I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to all of my clients and to everybody watching this and to you and Icons of Real Estate for putting on such a great podcast. I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to serve people in this business. I genuinely love what I do. There are very stressful days, but it is all worth it in the end. Uh, very nice. Jenny, thanks so much. Look forward to talking to you again, maybe in the next year and see how things have uh, worked out and what happens in 2023. I would love that. Hey, have a great weekend. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.